Okay, today I'm going to try to show you how to use Microsoft Excel to calculate an average uh, standard deviation and then also present that data in a bar chart with error bars. So what I've got here are two groups, two data sets, uh, group A and group B. Let's just assume that we're talking about length. I've used centimeters because that's a unit that we're all familiar with. So the first thing I want to do is calculate the average uh, of this group A's data. And then I'm going to show you how easy it is to calculate um, the same thing for group B. So in Excel, if you want to do a calculation, typing in an equal sign tells Excel, the software, that you want to do a calculation. Now, maybe you'll have a different version of uh, Excel. Um, I may need to do an update on mine. But over here on the left, when I do this, um, it gives me the most common functions that get used in Excel. So I want to calculate an average right now. So I'm going to make sure I click on average. And automatically, right, it, it picks a bunch of cells to average. And you can see that it says it's going to this is going to equal the average of everything between cell C5 and C18. So C5 is this cell with the 13 in it. And C18 is this blank cell down here. You can see 18 on the left and C on the top. I don't actually need C18, and it won't really affect my values, but just to show you, you can go in and adjust uh, the cells that it actually highlights. So I now made it C17. That got rid of that blank cell from being included in my calculation. So now Excel is going to calculate the average of everything between C5 and C17. Now, that was pretty easy, right? I just told it what I wanted it to do, and it saved me a lot of time because I don't have to type all of these values into my calculator and then divide them by the number of values. There's a lot of places in there where I might make a mistake, and it's just time consuming. And so having Excel do this for me is really, really easy. What's really nice about spreadsheets is that if, you have, if you're gonna do the same calculation over and over again, it saves you a lot of time. So I wanna do the same thing to group B, to this set of data. All I have to do is grab this little square at the bottom of the cell. So I've clicked on my average here. Remember, it's all highlighted. There's a green outline, but there's this little green square at the bottom. You can see my cursor changes when I go over it. If I grab that and I drag it to the right, okay, it just calculated the average of all this. Now, how do I know that? If I click on this box now and I look up here, it says equals average of D5 to D17. So it actually was so smart that it took my equation and because I dragged it one column to the right, it dragged the letter one column. It went from C to D. So now it did the exact same calculation on this data set. So that was even easier than calculating this average. It was really easy just to drag this over and it calculated it for me. So that's pretty great. Now I want to do the same thing for a standard deviation. So again, I tell it equals. Uh, I want to tell it to do standard deviation, which is abbreviated STDEV. And then now you'll see this time it, it tried to guess at what I was going to want it to uh, do the calculation on, and it guessed wrong. That's okay. I can go in and fix it. So I click into my equation, and I'm going to tell it C5 and then colon uh, up to C17. Okay. You can also, if you get rid of all those, you don't have to type it in. You can just drag it. So by dragging that, I also told it the same thing, C5 to C17. Now I hit enter, and that is my standard deviation on that data set. And if I drag this over, it'll do the exact same thing. I can double check. It's done the exact same thing to my group B data. So the spreadsheet allows me to enter an equation. It's going to do a calculation for me, and then it's really easy to repeat that calculation on other data sets. OK, so now I'm going to do a couple more things so that I can present this more nicely um, and present it as a bar chart. So the first thing is I don't want all these decimal places. Uh, I only know these lengths to the nearest centimeter, so I don't know why I'm reporting it with eight decimal places. I, we definitely would not be confident enough in our values to report so many decimal places. So um, Excel just does that. It gives you a certain number of decimal places automatically. So if you control click, command click, uh, and you get here, you can go to format cells. Within format cells, if you go to number, you can choose the number of decimal places. So I'm going to just choose one um, because I think anything more than that seems a little silly. So now I've got my averages, I've got my standard deviations, and they have been rounded off to one decimal point. Okay. And get rid of that thing, give myself a little more space. Now I want to do a graph. And I want to do a graph of 
um, my averages. I don't want to graph all my data points. I just want to graph the average values and the standard deviations as error bars to give a sense, a visual sense of the variation in the data. So what I'm going to do for a bar chart is I'm going to highlight group A and group B, those headings, and I'm going to highlight the values that I want to graph. So I don't want to highlight all these other values, just the averages. And now I'm going to insert and I can do recommended charts. I can go to insert chart and it's going to give me different options. Uh, in my version of Excel, when I do, when I click on the insert tab, it gives me different types of graphs up here. I can see the little pictures. So I'm going to choose this one that looks like a, a column or bar chart, which is what I want. And because I highlighted the, the labels as well, group A, group B, they actually show up right under the bars that they go along with. So that's really nice. Um, now, I don't know what we're graphing here. We're, we're showing uh, heights of two groups of things. I don't know what they are. Uh, I, I just made up these values. But we've got two groups, um, and we're talking about length. So let's say we're talking about heights of two groups of things. So that's what my, my title now says. And I probably want to be clear that what unit I'm in. So I either list the units here. Uh, I could change the layout so that I also have uh, labels on the y-axis and the x-axis. So I could do that as well. And I actually think that's a good idea. So this is uh, height in centimeters. Now that's really clearly labeled. And this is, uh, in this case, type of thing because we're just talking about things. I don't know what they are. So type, type of thing, height in centimeters, and here's a title that's informative. Okay, now that's uh, graphing the averages. And so if you just looked at these, you'd say, ah, oh, well, group A is clearly way taller than, than uh, group B is way taller than group A. But what we also want us to consider is the variation in the groups. And we're gonna do that with our standard deviation. So now if I'm clicked on my uh, graph here, or my chart, you can see up at the top left, that it says add chart element. So I'm gonna go in there and one of the options is error bars. I'm gonna click on more error bar options. Don't get tricked by the standard deviation option. We want you to do it a different way. So you're gonna to go to more error bar options. And uh, the kind of, the one it normally gives you is the vertical error bar since really, well in this one, we only have uh, vertical um, values. We don't have any X values in numbers. So later on in the year, we may have ones where there's both X and Y. It will give you both the vertical and horizontal error bars. But for now, we just have the vertical error bars. Uh, we want there to be an error bar in both directions. So the plus and the minus. So it sticks above our chart and below our chart. That's what both means. It's also nice when it has a cap on the end. That's usually how we draw the error bars. You can take away the cap and it just takes away that little bit that sticks across at the top. So I, I would like for there to be a cap. And now in terms of how big are the error bars, I'm going to specify the value myself. I'm going to make it custom. So when I click on that specify value, it wants me to tell it how far up to stick, the positive error value, and then how far below my average to stick. That's the negative error value. So I'm going to click on this white box. And now it's telling me to tell it what to use as it, the plus value. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to highlight both of these boxes standard deviation for group A, and then I'm going to drag over and also put group B. That way, it's actually going to put the different values with the different data sets. Now, I want the plus part of my error bar and the negative part of my error bar to be the same. So I'm just going to repeat what I just did exactly the same. Drag over both of those, and now click OK. Now, if we look at it, let's try to make sure. Does this make sense? Does this match the values? So. The standard deviation for group A is about 15, and the standard deviation for B is about 28, or almost 30, so it's almost twice as big. If you look at the error bars, and you look at how long the whole line segment is, the one for B, I would say, is, is pretty much exactly twice as long as the one for A. So it looks like uh, it matches what we wanted it to, so they're a different size. So that's really important, because the different sets of data have a different amount of variation, and the error bar should reflect that. You can also see if it's about, you know, 15 is the standard deviation. So the error bars should stretch for around 30 um, centimeters. And they do. They go from a little below 30 to a little below 60. So this one's about 30 long. This one should be about 56 long because it's plus 28 and minus 28. So it's always a good idea once you've made your chart, you've added error bars, Double check, make sure that you've done it right by seeing if the values match what you wanted them to.
So that's how you can use uh, Excel to calculate a mean or an average, to calculate a standard deviation, and to make a simple bar chart where each error bar is a different length and it matches what you tell it to. It matches the standard deviation for that data set. I hope that was helpful and now you should be able to apply it to your own sets of data.